Here's the cool question, which is frequently used in a test. You're presented with three expressions. Circle with the dot inside plus another circle plus another circle equals 48. In the second expression, you add square plus circle and the result equaled 40. And in the third expression, you divide square by the diamond and the result is equal to. So you need to calculate the diamond. You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 24. Can you do the math? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how quickly you are with the math. Ready or not, I am moving forward and going to reveal you how to do the calculation and solve this particular problem. If you think about it, the symbols that are presented for this problem are no different to X, Y, and Z that we so used to in math. So let's look at the first expression from that standpoint. You see that the value of circle can easily be calculated. We do it by dividing 48 by 3, and the result is equal 16. So circle with the dot inside equals 16. In the next step, we need to calculate the square. Square equals 40 minus the circle, which equals 40 minus 16, and the result equals 24. And in the last step, we need to calculate the diamond. Diamond equals square divided by 2, which equals 24 divided by 2, and the result equals 12. So the correct answer is choice B, 12. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the practice problem for you. You're presented with the chart that shows average price of cryptocurrency. And this chart shows the average price for each month from January to May. You need to calculate what is the highest approximate percentage price increase between two consecutive months. And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 70%, choice C, 80%, and choice D, 90%. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you the feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's a cool question which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit, and second cube is a larger cube, and it has side length equals three units. So the question is, how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, nine. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. 
To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal 3 cube. That's where the word cube might be coming from, which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 equals 3 cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. It is almost guaranteed that you will get question like this on every test. You're presented with the sequence of numbers and you need to determine the next number in the sequence. In this case, the numbers are 2, 10, 30, 68, 130, and the next number is missing. Can you determine what comes next in the sequence? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 216. Choice B, 218. Choice C, 220. And choice D, 222. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. That's about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, I'm moving forward so we can get to the correct solution together. When dealing with sequence questions, my recommendation to you is always look for patterns. And to determine the answer in this case, we need to use the pattern n cube plus n. So it starts with the first number, which is equal to, and it was calculated as one cube plus one equals two. Next number was calculated as two cube plus two equals 10. The following number was calculated as three cube plus three equals 30. Then four cube plus four equals 68. Five cube plus five equals 130, which means that the missing number should be calculated as 6 cubed plus 6, and the result would be equal 222. So the correct answer here is choice D, 222. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the cool simple question, which is frequently used to test mental math capabilities. There is an unknown number you need to determine. 1 was added to this number, then 2 was subtracted from the result, and then it was multiplied by 3 and then divided by 4. The result is 6. What is the unknown number? You have four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 8. Choice C, 9. Choice D, 12. Can you determine the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds if you need more time. Ready or not, I am going to continue, reveal the correct answer as well as solution on how to solve these types of challenges. The best way to solve these types of challenges is to reverse the calculation by solving the problem backwards. So what we can do, we can multiply 6 by 4, then divide by 3, add 2 and subtract 1. And the result of these calculations is 9. Let's check to make sure it's correct, which is another good idea to do on the test. Let's put in parentheses 9 plus 1 minus 2, close parentheses, then multiply the result by 3, divide by 4, and the result will be equal to 6. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the practice question for you. You need to calculate which item comes next in the sequence. You're presented with the series of numbers 2, 10, 
30, 68, 130, and you need to calculate which number comes next. You have four different choices. Choice A, 216. Choice B, 218. Choice C, 220. Choice D, 222. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured it out, please make sure to post your answer in the comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! There is a very high chance that you will see this type of question on the test. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. This matrix contains different shapes inside. In our case, the matrix contains triangles, pentagons, and cubes. You have two spaces that are missing the shape, and you need to select from four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the solution? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Most likely, you will not get any more time on the real test. Ready or not, let's continue and get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, my advice to you is always look for patterns. And there are multiple patterns present here in this particular challenge. If you will detect and will use at least one of the patterns, you will be able to find solution to this challenge. The first patterns is that the shapes lines are in order 3, 6, and 9 lines. Let me clarify. Triangle has 3 lines, pentagon has 5 lines, and cube has 9 lines. Second pattern is that the small circle inside the shape alternatively rotates from being inside the shape to being outside of the shape. And then the last but not the least pattern is that the black circle outside of the shape also changes its location. So if you follow the pattern and look closely at the possible choices, you will calculate that the correct answer to this challenge is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an example of excellent problem that you frequently see on the test. You're presented with the series of shapes and you need to determine which of the following shapes comes next in the sequence. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look at this picture to see if you can come up with the answer. Give yourself 10 to 15, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the test. You can pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you make your choice? Let's go ahead and continue so we can get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured it out by now, the key to solving this challenge is to understanding what exactly is happening here in these pictures. And the answer is that we're drawing the miniature house using straight line. And the most important point that we're tracing this house continuously until the house is built. Once you understand this part of the problem, it's easy to solve. Let's draw this house step by step. There are eight lines in the final house. Let's draw all eight lines one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now having this information handy, we can go back to the original problem and easily see the solution. And the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question which validates how well you do planning of your day-to-day -day work. Mary spends one-third of her 24-hour day at work. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. How many hours does she spend in meetings? You have four different choices. Choice A one hour and 30 minutes. Choice B, two hours. Choice C, two hours and 30 minutes. And choice D, three hours. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. 
maybe a bit longer, depending how well you typically solve these types of problems. Ready or not, let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. As you might be well aware, full day has 24 hours. Mary's working hours are very typical. They represent one third of the full day, which is eight hours. And we calculate it by multiplying 24 by one third, or actually dividing 24 by three. Meetings take one fourth of her workday. So to calculate how much time she spends in meetings, we need to multiply eight hours by one fourth. And the result is two hours. So the correct answer is choice B, two hours. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's an interesting question. You may need to know not just for the test, but also if you're trying to rent the house. Five college students together rented a house. One of them decided to move out earlier and now their rent would be $260 higher for each remaining tenant. What is the cost of the total rent, considering the rent is shared equally among students? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $5,200. Choice B, $3,120. Choice C, $2,600. And choice D, $2,340. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. One of the easiest way to solve this challenge is to create a formula. Let's start by defining a variable, and we will define this variable as S, which would represent an initial split rent for five students. So, using this formula, we can calculate the total house rent as five multiplied by S, which means that after one student left, the total house rent could also be calculated as four multiplied, and then the value in parentheses, S plus $260. Using both approaches, we can create an expression. 5 multiplied by s equals 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses s plus $260. Once we simplify it, we'll get to the equation 5s minus 4s equals $1,040, which means that the s equals $1,040, which represents initial one student trend. To calculate total house rent, we need to multiply 5 by $1,040 and the result will be $5,200. So the answer is choice A, $5,200. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar. Here's the cool problem, which is easy to understand, but might be a little tricky to solve. The box has 15 marbles of green yellow and orange colors. There are seven times more of green marbles than yellow. How many orange marbles does the box have? You have four different choices. Choice A, five. Choice B, seven. Choice C, eight. And choice D, nine. Can you calculate the answer? Or guess it? Or find out? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Interesting problem, don't you think? To solve this type of problems, let's separate facts from the formulas. We have two facts. We have 15 total marbles, and marbles are of three different colors, green, yellow, and orange. And the formula that we are presented with is that there are seven times more of yellow marbles than the green marbles. How does it help us? With this type of information, we can easily build the calculations and we will base our calculation based off of yellow marbles. The calculations will be yellow marbles plus seven multiplied by yellow marble plus orange marbles equals 15. Because 15 is a relatively small number, we can start guessing how many yellow marbles are in there. Our ability to solve this challenge is based off of the fact 
that there is a very small number of total marbles. If we can optimize this formula and simplify it, we can come up with the formula that 8 yellow marbles plus however many orange marbles equals 15. So the question is, how many yellow marbles can there be in total? Can there be two yellow marbles? No, because if we will multiply 8 by 2, we will get to the total of 16 marbles, which is greater than the 15, which is the current total number of marbles. Based on this information, the box cannot have more than one yellow marble. And if there is only one yellow marble, there is going to be seven green marbles, because we already have a formula that number of green marbles is calculated by multiplying seven to the number of yellow marbles. So the only thing that's left is calculating how many orange marbles are out there. And we can easily calculate it by using the formula 8 plus x equals 15. So the x is calculated by subtracting 8 from 15. The x equals 7. The correct answer here then is choice B, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a very interesting problem, which tests not just your math skills, but also your cognitive ability skills. First and second bookshelves together have 80 books. First and third bookshelves together have 60 books. Second and third bookshelves together have 40 books. How many books are in there on each shelf? You have four different choices. For the first, second, and third bookshelves, in the choice A, you have 40, 40, and 20. In choice B, 50, 30, and 10. In choice C, 30, 50, and 10. And in the choice D, 55, 25, and 15. Do you see the answer? Can you calculate it? Can you? Or maybe you cannot. Maybe you can use some other tricks to solve this challenge. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Ready or not, I am going to move forward so we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. What's interesting about this problem is that there is no easy formula you can come up with. Maybe you're different, at least this is how it was in my case. So if you can come up with the formula, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. But what I did, I started looking at the facts. And the facts are, is that on the first and second bookshelves, we have 80 books. On the first and third bookshelf, we have 60. On the second and third, we have 40. And what's interesting about this fact is that each bookshelf is presented here twice. First is twice, second is twice, and then the third bookshelf also appears in this calculations twice. So what we can do here, we can calculate doubled number of books on all three bookshelves. We can do it by adding up 80 plus 60 plus 40 and the result will be equal to 180. Because 180 is the double number of books, we can calculate just the total of books on all three shelves. We can do it by dividing 180 by 2 and the result is 90 and now we can calculate the number of books on each and every shelf. So having this information handy and looking at the facts, we can calculate the number of books on each individual shelf. For example, the number of books on the first shelf can be calculated by subtracting 40 from 90 and the result will be 50. The number of books on the second shelf can be calculated by subtracting 60 from 90 and the result will be 30. And the number of books on the third shelf can be calculated by subtracting 80 from 90 and the result will be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B. There are 50 books on the first shelf, 30 books on the second shelf and 10 books on the third shelf. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar challenges on the test. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You're presented with four different letters 
and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B, and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with the pie chart of United States energy consumption. Consumption consists of five different parts, natural gas, coal, nuclear, renewables, as well as petroleum. The ratio between natural gas, petroleum, coal, nuclear power, and renewables is 8 to 6 to 4 to 3 and to 3. The total consumption for energy is $3 billion. So how much in United States dollars was consumed in form of petroleum? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $510 million. Choice B, $610 million. Choice C, $750 million. And choice D, $600 million. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds and post your calculated answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is an excellent question, variations of which we very frequently see on the test. The pet store sells baby parrots and kittens. Inventory recorded 15 heads and 36 legs for all animals in the store. How many parrots and kittens are there in the store? And you have four different choices. Choice A, two kittens and 13 parrots. Choice B, three kittens and 12 parrots. Choice C, four kittens and 11 parrots. And choice D, five kittens and 10 parrots. Do you see the answer? Can you do the calculations and come up with the correct solution? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video and trying to do mental math and come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and work on the solution together. You start to solve these types of challenges by looking at the facts. And we have two facts here. We have 15 total heads of animals in the store. And we also have 36 legs. We also know that each parrot has two legs and one head. And each kitten has four legs and one head. In fact, both animals have one head. And unless it's a fairy tale, I don't know any animal that have more than one head. So number of heads can be used to calculate total number of animals in the store. Because there are 15 heads, there are 15 animals in the store. Based on this information, we can create a formula. Number of parrots in the store plus number of kittens in the store equals 15. So based on this, we can calculate number of parrots. Number of parrots equals 15 minus number of kittens. We can do similar expression based on the number of legs. 2 multiplied by number of parrots plus 4 multiplied by the number of kittens equals 36. Now let's replace parrots in this expression with 15 minus kittens. So 15 minus kittens multiplied by 2 plus 4 multiplied by the number of kittens equals 36. Which means 30 minus 2 kittens plus 4 kittens equals 36. After simplification, 2 kittens equals 36 minus 30. Which means that there are 3 kittens in the store. Number of parrots then will be calculated by subtracting 3 from 15. And number of parrots equals 12. So the correct answer here is choice B. 3 kittens and 12 parrots. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is one of the frequently used questions to test your understanding of the percentages. Candidate 
is taking a test, so imagine yourself, with 60 multiple choice questions and answered 60% of the first 20 questions correctly so far. So, what percent of the remaining questions does candidate need to answer correctly to get 70% rate on the test? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 65%, choice C, 70%, and choice D, 75%. Do you see the answer? Take a close look and possibly get yourself a piece of paper or use Microsoft Excel to do the calculations. Or maybe you can do all the calculations in your head. That would be amazing. Give yourself 15 to 20 seconds. This particular question might require a lot of steps. So give yourself some time and try to solve it. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the correct answer as well as the solution. As I already mentioned, this is a multi-tiered question and it requires you to do multiple calculations to get to the correct answer. So the first calculation we would need to do is how many questions have already been answered correctly by the candidate. And the answer is calculated by multiplying 20 questions by 60%. So the answer is 12 questions have already been answered correctly so far by the candidate. In the next phase, we need to determine how many remaining questions need to be answered correctly to pass the test at 70% rate. So if there are 60 questions total on the test and we need to pass it at 70% rate, we will get to 42 questions that need to be answered correctly to get a passing rate of 70%. In the next phase, we need to calculate how many remaining questions remain on the test. To do this, we need to subtract 20 from 60 and it tells us that 40 questions are still remaining. Now, how many questions need to be answered correctly out of remaining questions to still get to 70% passing rate. To calculate this, we need to subtract 12, which is the number of questions we already answered correctly out of first 20 questions answered from 42 and 42 minus 12 equals 30, which means that out of remaining 40 questions, 30 questions need to be answered correctly to get to the 70% passing rate. So the last calculation we need to do is to calculate what is the percentage of remaining questions we need to answer correctly. To do this, we need to divide 30 by 40 and multiply it by 100%, which is an equivalent of 0.75 multiplied by 100%. And the correct answer is choice D, 75%. Do you know the better way to solve this challenge? Please share your thoughts in the comments section of this video. And I hope that you nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might be presented with the pie chart questions on the test. This is an example of this type of question. You need to calculate petroleum consumption. The ratio between natural gas, petroleum, coal, nuclear power and renewables consumption is 8 to 6 to 4 to 3 to 3. The total consumption of energy is $3 billion. So, how much in US dollars was consumed in form of petroleum? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 510 million. Choice B, 610 million. Choice C, 750 million. And choice D, $600 million. Do you see the answer? Do you know how to calculate these types of problems? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to go ahead and reveal the solution and the way to solve these types of problems on the test. The best way to solve these types of challenges is to understand the relationship between the consumption ratio and total value of energy consumed in US dollars. If we add up of all the units in the ratio, we will get to the sum of 24, because 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 3 and plus 3 equals 24. Our total consumption expense is $3 billion, but answers are presented in million dollars. So we need to convert $3 billion into million dollars, which would be an equivalent of $3,000 million. Petroleum represents 6 units out of 24, so the total consumption of petroleum can be calculated as 6 divided by 24 multiplied 
by 3000? And we will get our answer as 0 0.25 multiplied by 3000, which will equal $750 million. So the correct choice here is choice C, $750 million. Did you come up with the same answer? If you know the better way to solve this challenge, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. Here's an excellent problem that you frequently see on the test. Anna is four years older than her brother. Two years ago, her brother's age was three-fourths of Anna's age. How old her brother will be in five years? And you're presented with four different choices. Age 23, choice B, 21, choice C, 19, and choice D, 18. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. You can either get yourself a piece of paper or do mental calculations. The problem is simple enough so you can get to the correct answer. Do you see the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The coolest thing about this problem is that it seems simple, but in reality, it deals with three moments in time. It deals with today moment. It deals with the moment of two years ago. And it deals in the brother's age in five years moment. As soon as we know either Anna's or her brother's age at any moment of time, we should be able to calculate brother's age in five years. So let's go ahead and do the calculations. In this problem, we're dealing with one fact. Anna is four years older than her brother. And this fact never changes. So we can build formula Anna's age equals her brother's age plus four. We are also dealing with age-specific difference at the moment of time. For example, we've learned that Anna's brother's age was three-fourths of Anna's age two years ago. So let's do calculations for two years ago. Brother's age equals three-fourths of Anna's age. Now, let's use factual information about brother's age. Brother's age equals Anna's age minus 4. And now, we can create an equation based on Anna's age in the moment of time two years ago. Anna's age minus 4, based on the fact, equals 3 fourths of Anna's age. Which means that Anna's age minus 3 fourths of Anna's age equals 4. One quarter of Anna's age equals four, and Anna's age equals 16. So two years ago, Anna was 16 years old, and her brother was three-fourths of 16, 12 years old. Now Anna's brother is two years older, which can be calculated as 12 plus two and equals 14 years old, which means that in five years, Anna's brother will be 14 plus 5, 19 years old. So the correct answer here is choice C, 19 years old. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a cool question which tests your knowledge of percentages. You're presented with the chart which shows average cryptocurrency price. And question tells you that the chart shows the average price of cryptocurrency for each month from January to May. And the question is, what is the highest approximate percentage price increase between two consecutive months? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 70%, choice C, 80%, and then choice D, 90%. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how well you are with calculations. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. This challenge, we need to analyze the chart first. And there are only two consecutive months with the price increases. Price goes up from January to February, and then from February to March. And price goes down from March to April, and price goes down from April to May as well. So let's look at two months with price increases closely. Between January and February, price went up from $10 to 
to $15. So the difference is 15 minus 10 equals 5. Between February and March, price went up from $15 to $27. So the price increase is calculated by subtracting 15 from 27 and the result is 12. Let's calculate the percentage increase. Between January and February, price increased by 50%. This is calculated by dividing 5 by 10 and multiplying by 100%. The end result of this is 50%. Between February and March, price increased by 80%. And this is calculated by dividing 12 to 15 and multiplying by 100%. The end result of this calculation is 80%. So the correct choice here is choice C, 80%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now it's your turn. I would like you to practice and try to answer this question on your own. Please analyze the question and post your answer as well as your rationale of how you did the calculations in the comment section of this video. You're presented with two squares, smaller square is inside the larger square. Both squares have numbers in the corners. The larger square has numbers 15, 11, 32, and 23. The smaller square has numbers 22, 13, 5, and one number is missing. And this is the number you need to calculate. You have four different choices. Choice A, 1, choice B, 7, choice C, 12, and choice D, 17. Do you see the pattern? Can you calculate the correct number? Please post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thank you for participating and good luck! There is a very high chance that you will see this type of question on the test. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. This matrix contains different shapes inside. In our case, the matrix contains triangles, pentagons, and cubes. You have two spaces that are missing the shape, and you need to select from four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the solution? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Most likely, you will not get any more time on the real test. Ready or not, let's continue and get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, my advice to you is always look for patterns. And there are multiple patterns present here in this particular challenge. If you will detect and will use at least one of the patterns, you will be able to find solution to this challenge. The first patterns is that the shapes lines are in order 3, 6 and 9 lines. Let me clarify. Triangle has three lines, pentagon has five lines, and cube has nine lines. Second pattern is that the small circle inside the shape alternatively rotates from being inside the shape to being outside of the shape. And then the last but not the least pattern is that the black circle outside of the shape also changes its location. So if you follow the pattern and look closely at the possible choices, you will calculate that the correct answer to this challenge is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is one of my favorite questions because it's easy to understand but might be challenging to solve. You need to calculate question mark and you're presented with the expression. You need to calculate question mark and on the other side of the expression, you have 16 divided by 4 and multiplied on the value in parentheses 3 minus 1. You have four different choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 4. And choice D, 1. Do you think you can calculate the answer? Think again. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds. You can pause this video to see if you can come up with the correct solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and continue so we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As we all learned in school, the correct order of operations in math 
is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. You can even use the acronym PEMDAS, which reflects first letter from all of these operations. Based on this information, the first step in the calculation would be subtracting 1 from 3, because these are the values in parentheses, and the result of this calculation is 2. The question is, what are we going to do next? We have a choices of dividing 16 by 4 or multiplying 4 by 2. And the correct answer here is that we need to divide 16 by 4 as a second step. What PEMDAS doesn't mention is that multiplication and division have equal priority and calculated from left to right. And this is exactly the case for our expression. 16 divided by 4 is on the left side of the expression and 4 multiplied by 2 is on the right side. So the first thing we need to do is divide 16 by 4. The result of this calculation is 4. And in the last step, we need to multiply 4 by 2. And the result is 8. So the correct choice here is choice A, 8. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the cool question, variations of which we frequently see on the test. Young couple drove 1,200 miles in three days during their honeymoon. They drove three times more on the first day than on the last day, and the same mileage on the second day as on the first and third days combined. How many miles did they drive each day? you have four different choices. For the first, second, and third day, you have choices of A, 600, 400, and 200. Choice B, 550, 450, and 250. For choice C, you have 450, 600, and 150. And for choice D, you have 450, 700, and 150. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. You can use a piece of paper or you can do mental math. Now let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. 1200 miles together with your loving partner, what could be the better time to spend? Anyway, let's first look at the facts. There are two facts that I'd like to point out. Fact number one in this problem is that on the third day, they drove one-third of the first day miles. They probably got tired, right? And the second fact is on the second day, they drove first day miles plus third day miles combined. So what's interesting here, can we base our calculations based off of the last day mileage? And what I mean by that is that can we use the third day miles as X in the expression we're trying to build? Based on this information, on the first day, they drove 3x miles. On the second day, they drove 3x plus x miles. In total, they drove 1200 miles. So now we can build an expression 3x in parentheses 3x plus x and then plus additional x equals 1200 miles. Let's do the calculation for x, which also represents the third day x equals 1200 divided by 8, which is 150 miles. And this is how many miles they drove on the third day. On the first day then, they drove 3 multiplied by 150, which is an equivalent of 450 miles. And on the second day, they drove 450 plus 150 equals 600 miles. So the correct choice here is choice C. On the first day, 450 miles, second day 600 miles and on the third day 150 miles the cool thing is that you didn't just get ready for the test but in case you have honeymoon coming up and are interested in three-day driving trip and have couple good locations in mind you know how you would calculate the miles for your planned trip and now here's the question for you to try if you can calculate the answer please post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you the grade. We have two projects. 
And to complete project 1, it takes 8 hours. And to complete project 2, it takes 12 hours. So how much longer, in percentages, it takes to complete project 1 versus project 2? You have 4 different choices. Choice A, 4%. Choice B, 50%. Choice C, 100%. And choice D, 150%. Can you calculate the answer? Please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you the grade. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's the tricky problem we frequently see on the test. You're presented with the seven letters of English alphabet. The letters are C, E, M, A, D, A, and Y and you need to guess the word using all the letters presented. Give yourself 15 to 20 seconds, maybe longer, depending upon your experience of guessing particular words. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to get to the correct solution together. The correct answer here is the word academy, which is spelled as A-C-A-D-E-M-Y. Did you guess any other words that might meet the criteria of the original question? Please make sure to post them in the comment section of this video so we all can learn. And if you're looking to get better solving word puzzles, make sure to try crosswords as well as the Scrabble game. Here's the question that on the surface seems very, very hard to solve. But in reality, the answer to this question is very simple. You're presented with five different squares. Squares 1 through 4 have shapes inside, and you need to determine the missing square 5. You're presented with four different choices, A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the correct answer. Maybe give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, or maybe longer, 10 to 20 seconds. This is about as much time as you'll get on the real test. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, test writers are trying to trick you. And in this particular case, there is no pattern within the shape. It's all random. No matter how hard you try, you will not be able to determine any patterns among those small shapes. The pattern here is the decreasing number of shapes. If you look at the figure 1, it has 6 shapes. If you look at the figure 2, it has 5, 4, 3, so the answer for the figure 5, the number of inside shapes should be 2. So the correct answer here is choice C. Hopefully you nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Some of you might disagree, but calculating missing numbers is one of my favorite types of questions. A lot of times you are presented with the 3 by 3 matrix, typically a square, which has small squares inside. In our case, we have numbers in the different colors presented in the smaller squares inside the larger square. The numbers are 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4. And then one number is missing, and this is the one that you need to calculate. Once you complete the calculation, you need to select one of the four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Take a look closely and see if you can identify the missing number. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can come up with the right solution. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. In this particular case, we need to look at the patterns inside the rows and then inside the columns. Let's look at the first two rows to see if we can get a pattern. The sum of 5 plus 2 plus 1 equals to 8. The sum of 2 plus 3 plus 3 also equals to 8. So there might be a pattern. Let's look if there is a pattern for the columns that have full sets of numbers. 5 plus 2 plus 4 equals 11. 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 9. So there is no pattern. In this case, we can relatively simply use the pattern from the rows. This would allow us to calculate the third row. If we know that the sum should be 8, we can assume that the 4 plus 4 plus question mark, which would be representing the missing number, would be equal to 8. So the missing number would be equal to 0. 
The correct choice here is choice A, zero. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you might be asked to detect the pattern. In this question, we're being asked which item comes next in the sequence. And we're presented with the sequence of items. Six items in the sequence are visible. Zero, two, six, 12, 20, and 30. And the next item is missing. And you're being asked to select one of the four following choices. Choice A, 42. Choice B, 44. Choice C, 46. And choice D, 48. Do you see the answer? It may or may not be obvious, depending upon your skills of detecting the pattern. Like it or not, we're going to continue and I'll share with you the answer. As with any type of question, the key is to determine the pattern. To determine the answer in this particular case, you need to increment previous number by the greater even digit in the sequence. You can even come up with the formula. And in our case, the formula to determine the next number would be current number plus 2 multiplied by current position. Let's see how it works. For example, let's take the number 0. This is the first number in the sequence. To determine the next number in the sequence, we need to add previous number, which is 0, and then 2 multiplied by 1, because number 0 has the first position in the sequence. Instead of using the formula, you can also use the next even number and add it to the previous number. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, and you can increment them down the list. So you can add 2 to 0, the next one would be 4, 2 plus 4 equals 6, the next number would be 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, the next number would be 8, and 12 plus 8 equals 20. The number after that would be 10, so 20 plus 10 would be 30. And the number after that would be 12, and 30 plus 12 equals 42. The correct choice here is choice A, 42. Hopefully you've nailed this question, and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is one of my favorite questions and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangle, and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. Here's the tricky problem we frequently see on the test. You're presented with the seven letters of English alphabet. The letters are C, E, M, A, D, A, and Y. And you need to guess the word using all the letters presented. Give yourself 15 to 20 seconds, maybe longer, depending upon your experience of guessing particular words. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to get to the correct solution together. The correct answer here is the word academy, which is spelled as A-C-A, -A, 
D E M Y. Did you guess any other words that might meet the criteria of the original question? Please make sure to post them in the comment section of this video so we all can learn. And if you're looking to get better solving word puzzles, make sure to try crosswords as well as the Scrabble game. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic. How would you calculate how many seconds are there in a year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question. It gives you some laugh and you now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in a test. You're presented with the matrix, 4x3 matrix. Each cell in the matrix has numbers. For example, first row in the matrix has numbers 2, 8, 7, and 6. Second row has numbers 9, 5, 9, 5. And the third row has numbers 9, 7, 4, and one number in the bottom right corner is missing. And this is exactly what you need to calculate. You can choose from one of four different choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7. Choice C, 9. And then choice D, 11. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get on the test. Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct answer together. The key to solve this problem is to determine the pattern. And the pattern either can be in the rows or in columns. In this particular case, let's check the columns first. And then what you see is that each column adds up to the value of 20. For example, 2 plus 9 plus 9 is 20. 8 plus 5 plus 7 is 20. 7 plus 9 plus 4 is 20 as well. We also want to check if there is a pattern with the rows. And there is no pattern. Because the first row adds up to 23. 2 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 equals 23. And the second row adds up to 28. 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5 equals 28. So there is no pattern. Based on this information, you can calculate the missing value in the fourth column. 6 plus 5 plus question mark equals 20. So the answer is C, 9. This is the missing value. Hopefully you figured it out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's another puzzling question you might find difficult to solve. You're presented with four triangles. Each triangle has a number in the corner. And you need to calculate one of the missing numbers in the upper corner of the black triangle. You have four different choices. You have choice A, 1. You have choice B, 2. You have choice C, 3. And you have choice D, 4. Can you determine the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Determining the pattern is the key to solving this challenge. For example, if you add up the numbers in the lower left corners, 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 in all triangles, you will get to the sum of 10. Same thing happens when you add up the numbers in the bottom right corners of the same triangles. 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 5 also equals 10. So same logic can be applied to the upper right corners of the triangles. As you can see, triangles are colored to confuse you. So you're only concentrated on the numbers inside of each triangles, but you're not looking across multiple triangles. 
The correct answer to this problem is choice A, 1, because this is the math of getting into 10 with the missing number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the practice problem for you to try. You are presented with two cubes. The smaller cube has side length equals 1, and for the larger cube, side length equals 3. So the question is, how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 81. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how good you are with visualization. And once you come up with the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. When you see a question like this, you might ask yourself, how can it possibly be even more confusing? But the reality is that the answer to the question I'm about to show you is very simple. Let's look in more details. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Two of the shapes in the matrix are missing. They are located in the bottom row. And you have four possible choices for the answers. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look. The solution is not obvious, but it is very simple. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds, maybe go to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Are you ready? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, the answer to this question is very simple. The pattern is represented in each row by decreasing number of diamonds. Let's look at the top row. You see that the top left square contains four black diamonds. The middle square in the top row contains only three diamonds. And then the right square in the top row contains only two diamonds. In the second row, the pattern reverses and it goes from right to left. And you see the same pattern of the white diamonds. Four goes down to three and then goes down to two. So in the bottom row, we need to follow the same pattern. The pattern will be the number of diamonds decreasing from four to two among the gray diamonds. So the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in the test. You are presented with five crossing circles. All circles are of the different colors. There are numbers inside the circles as well as the numbers on the intersections of the circles. In this particular case, you are presented with five different circles, all of them different colors, and the numbers that you see on the screen are 13, 3, 4, 7, 5, 10, 1 and 15. There is also one number missing, which is highlighted with the question mark. You need to calculate the missing number. And the choices are choice A, 7, choice B, 8, choice C, 9, and choice D, 11. Give yourself a few seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the typical test to calculate the answer. Do you see the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. As you might have figured out by now, sum of each numbers in the circle adds up to 16. For example, let's look at the green circle. We have numbers 13 and 3, and 13 plus 3 equals 16. In the blue circle, we have numbers 4 plus 7 plus 5, and all of them add up to 16. In the black circle, we have 1 and 15, also adds up to 16. And in the orange circle, we have 5 plus 1 plus 10, also equals 16. So to calculate question mark, which is the missing number, we need to add 3 plus 4 plus question mark and make an equation to make it equal 16. After doing the calculation, you see that the question mark and the missing number equals 9. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times, you might be presented with the question on the test that will try to determine your knowledge of English words as well as how quickly you can extract these words from your memory. In this particular case, we are looking at four letters Q, A, A, and U. And you need to guess the word by combining these letters. Do you see the word? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds 
to see if you can come up with the answer. Let's continue to see how we can get the correct answer together. As you might have figured out, the correct answer here is word aqua. The spelling of the final word is A-Q-U-A. -A. And you can get to the correct answer by rearranging the letters on the screen. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am very excited to present you with simple, but at the same time very tricky question, which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence, all but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. I'm excited to share with you a cool question which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the two by three matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the two by three matrix. Five shapes are present and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in this sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16, choice C, 27, and choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2 by multiplication get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 
and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there is no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. I wanted to share with you a cool question which started showing up on the tests very recently. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Each square of the matrix contains another matrix inside with the 3 by 3 small squares. There are different colors inside 3 by 3 small squares. In this case, we see gray, white, and black. One 3 by 3 square is missing, and you need to select out of the four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And your goal is to determine which of the following shapes completes the figure. Take a close look and see if you can identify the missing item. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, when you look for the first time, you might be intimidated by this matrix. But the answer actually is very simple. If we look closely at the smaller matrices, you see that the letters are being formed. You see that in the upper left corner, black boxes form a letter V. And if we look at the upper right corner, you see that the letter V also shows up. But now it's turned clockwise from the previous position. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, you can recognize letter T. And this letter shows up in the left column. But if we look in the middle row, in the right column, you see that the same letter T now is turned 90 degrees from the previous position. So now, if we follow the same logic, you can recognize letter V in the bottom left corner. According to the pattern that we've identified, this letter should be turned 90 degrees in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you need to practice with more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. The types of questions you're looking at is very frequently used on a test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group. And you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside. And you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles, and some squares only have one. But there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, B, and C. But in shape D, half circle is placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question 
and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect the pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is very interesting question which requires you to do calculations based on the pattern that you need to detect. You're presented with two squares. Small square is located inside the larger square. There are numbers in all corners of the larger square as well as in all corners in the smaller square. If we start looking at the numbers in the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see the numbers 15, 11, 32 and 23. In the smaller square, the numbers are 22, 13 and 5. And one number is missing. And this is the one that you need to calculate. Your choices are choice A, 1, choice B, 7, choice C, 12, choice D, 17. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. Possibly pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the pattern? Did you calculate the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As you might have guessed, the pattern here is that the difference between numbers in diagonally opposite corners of the larger and smaller squares is 10. For example, let's look at the upper left corner. The difference between 15 and 5 is 10. If we look at the bottom right corner, the difference between 32 and 22 is 10. And the lower left corner, the difference between 23 and 13 is 10 as well. So to calculate the missing number, we need to calculate the difference between 11 and 10. And the difference is 1. So the correct answer here is choice A, 1. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. 
Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.